Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we're going to learn about 4.1. We will learn about the definition of features of functions and how to identify them. So first, let's have a look at some prior knowledge. How to write use interval notation to represent inequalities. So first, x is less than 3 or equal to 3. When it has equal sign, we actually use the square bracket to represent. And since it's everything that's less than or equal to 3, we're going to start all the way from the left which is from negative infinity, and we use parentheses for negative infinity. Next, y is greater than negative 9. Since it's greater than, there's no equal sign, so we use parentheses and start from negative 9, going all the way up to a positive infinity. Any side we have any kind of infinity, we're going to use parentheses. Next, x is less than 4, and x is greater or equal to negative 5. So for this one, it's slightly tricky. Let's actually draw it on the number line first. So let's say this is our negative 5, and this is our 4. So less than 4, and there's no equal sign, so we use a open circle. And when it's actually greater or equal to, we use a closed circle. So this is the area it's actually representing. Now we can actually write that as an interval notation. Start from negative 5, so it's square bracket, negative 5 going all the way to 4, and the 4 is an open circle, so parentheses. Next, let's still draw it on the number line first. So y is greater than 5, and that means it's going to the right, and doesn't have equal sign, so open circle. And is less than or equal to 2, and the dot does have a equal sign, so it's a dot, and is less than or equal to, so goes to the left. In this case, we see they actually don't overlap, so we're going to start from all the way on the left, which is negative infinity, going to 2. Doesn't have equal sign, so square bracket. Then we're going to use this union sign to represent interval. Then this open circle, starting from the 5, going all the way up to infinity. So number line can really help us when we want to write them in internal notation. Next, let's have a look at some more definitions. Increasing and decreasing. We're talking about functions and their graphs. So the value are getting larger or going up. So when we move from the left to the right and the graph is looking like that, that means it's increasing. When graph looks like this going down, that means it's decreasing. When the graph is a flat line, that means it's not changing, so it's called a constant. And these are all talking about y values, so we should be looking up and down. And now two more, positive and negative. So the, for positive, the graph is above x-axis. So let's say this is our graph, and this is our x-axis. Positive means this portion is positive because it's actually above the x-axis. And for negative, it means if it's below, so that means this portion is actually negative. A few more definition, maximum and minimum. Maximum means a high point on the graph. So for example, if it's increasing and then decreasing, well, that point will actually be the maximum. So for example, a graph like this, that is going to be the maximum. And if we do the opposite, then it's going to be when it's decreasing, then it's going up. Well, that is going to give us a low point. So a graph like this, that will give us a low point, which is the minimum. And then we have two more concepts called local and absolute. So we can have local maximum and local minimum. That means, for example, we have a graph like this, okay? We have a few like going up and down. So local, it just means in that little portion, that is a minimum. But is it actually the minimum for the whole thing? It's not. So any local minimum, not all local minimum or maximum can be absolute, but all absolute can actually be local because for a small portion, we can actually say that is going to be the local one. So let's say this one, that if we just look at that small portion around it, it is a local maximum. But at the same time, for the whole thing, if you look at it, clearly that number is way higher than it. So it's not an absolute uh, maximum. And now if we look at this point, that in that small portion, it is a local minimum. But at the same time, if you like to look at the whole graph, that is the lowest point of the whole thing. So it's also a absolute minimum. Okay, two more definitions. 
x intercept and a y intercept. x intercept is also called a zero, so we're going to explore that definition more in the future. But it's where the graph is crossing the x axis. So, for example, if we have a graph like this, we have a graph like this. And this point would be the x, uh, the x intercept. Or if we actually have both axes, and we can have a graph like that, then this point is the y-intercept because it crosses the y-axis. Now let's look at a few examples. Number one, the graph is on the right. We're trying to find the positive, the negative, the increasing, decreasing, and constant, just basically all the definition we just, just defined. So positive, we remember, is about the, the part that's actually above zero. So this is our axis right there. Anything above zero is in that portion. So it's going to start from, that looks like it's 1.7. And since it's positive, we want it to be greater than zero. So we don't include that 1.7 because 1.7 is exactly zero on the axis. 1.7 is to infinity. As for negative, anything that's below, that's all negative. So it started from negative infinity all the way to 1.7. Next increasing. That means the graph is going up on the right. So going up. We can see, oh, this portion is going up. So it's basically from negative infinity to, that looks like it's about like 0.1. And then we also have another portion that's going up. This portion is for sure going up. And that actually starts from 1 all the way to infinity. And we use the union sign to represent. Decreasing means it's going down. Only this little portion is actually going down. So it's from 0.1 to 1. And we normally don't include the endpoints. Constant. This one actually doesn't have one, so no constant. Maximum. And we can actually talk about local maximum or absolute. Let's talk about local. In this small portion, we can see, oh, we have a local maximum point right there. And that looks like is going to be, I want to say it's about, let me erase all the other things so it's, I can see clearer. I think it's about 0 0.1. And for the y-axis, that is around negative 1.95. So that's a local maximum. But you can see clearly the graph keeps on going. So there's the actual maximum is going to be, absolute maximum is going to be infinity. Now, local minimum, I see a point right there, and that appears to be 1, comma, negative 3. X-intercept. The graph actually cross X-intercept right there, and that point is going to be 1.7, comma. The Y value is always going to be 0. And the Y-intercept across right there on this point is going to be 0 and negative 2. That's example 1. Uh, that's the first example. Now, actual example one, positive. We're looking for any portion that's above zero. I mean, above the x-axis. So starting from here and that curve, when it goes down about there. So that should be around 0.5. All the way to this 5, 6, 7, 7.5. As for the negative, any portion that's not in this section, that's negative. So started from negative infinity, all the way to 0.5. Then union is going to be 7.5 all the way to positive infinity. As for the increasing, we can see starting from here, when it's going up about like right there, that's increasing and that looks like it's around a four. So it's going from the negative two, As for decreasing, well, the next portion is going down, so it's going to start from 4. Going all the way to that point, it looks like it's not. As for constant, all the flat lines, like this portion on the left and that portion on the right, they're all constant. So I start from negative infinity to negative 2, and then start from 9 all the way to positive infinity. Next, maximum. You can see this point is like the highest point, and the coordinate for that one is 4.
As for minimum, the left side is lower than the right side, and this line is the lowest line. So I can just pick any point that kind of represent a minimum. That's negative 2 and negative 4. Looks like that's about negative 4. X intercept. It actually cross right there. First, and then on the right side as well. So this is going to be 0 0.50. And right one is 7.50. Okay, Y intercept, it actually cross right about there, that point for Y intercept. That looks like it's going to be 0, point, comma, negative. That's example one. Next, example two. We have a slightly more complicated graph. Positive, anything that's above, it gave you kind of some uh, quite clear point. Started from negative infinity, going all the way to this first point, which is negative two. And next portion is from negative one all the way to one. And the next portion is from two all the way up. So two positive infinity. For negative, well, anything that's not positive, from negative to negative 1, and then from 1 to 2. Increasing. Any section that's going up, so starting from here, going all the way up to here, starting from that point, going all the way up to the right. So that point looks like it's a negative 1.5, going all the way until 0, and then it started from, that looks like it's 1.5, Common five is one five all the way up to infinity. As for the decreasing, any portion that's not increasing is actually decreasing. So from negative infinity going all the way to negative 1.5, which is this portion, and going from 0 to 0.5. Constant, this graph actually doesn't have any part that's flat. Maximum, again, if we talk about absolute maximum, well, the ends doesn't end. The site doesn't end, so they are going actually to infinity. But if we just talk about local one, it should be that point, which is at 0, 4. As for the minimum, we actually have two kind of local minimum, and they look like uh, negative 1 half, 1.5, and that's about, I want to say it's negative 2.2. And the other point we have is a positive. 1.5 and negative 2.2. X-intercept that actually has 4 across 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. For the Y-intercept, there's only just that one point, which is at 0, comma, Hey, example three. Same idea. So we have positive, anything that's above, so to start from that point all the way to the right. So it's going to be from negative five to that looks like a five. Actually it's negative four. The labeled is negative five, so that's negative four. Okay, from for negative all the way from the left, from negative infinity to negative four. And all the way to the right, 5 positive infinity. Next, for increasing, we can see that part is actually going up when we move to the right. So from negative infinity, going all the way to a 3. And then that part is going up, so it's from a 2 to a 3. Decreasing that portion to the right, that looks like it's actually going down, so it's from 3 positive infinity. As for the constant, we do have one part that's flat, and that is from negative 3 all the way to 2. Maximum looks like this point is the maximum right there. So it's going to be 3, 5. That's like the coordinate. For minimum, on both sides, they are actually going to like negative infinity. So I'm just going to say negative infinity. There's not exactly a local one, because even for this portion, that's kind of flat. They're not exactly going down more. X intercept has two, one on the left, one on the right. So we have negative four, zero, 
and 5, 0. For y-intercept, it only cross once at that point. That is going to be 0, comma, 0. And next, let's think of this situation as running. If we want to describe it, basically this person, when it's running, it's, uh, we want to also include a direction. These are actually negative speed. That means he's actually slowing down speed-wise until he stops and he actually turns to the new direction and is speeding up. And then he stayed the same speed. Then I speed sped up again for that portion to the right. It's slowing now. It's actually going down, so it means he slowed down. And when it actually go to the negative direction, that means he turned and actually start running the opposite direction, but is running faster. So it's a, it's quite a process when you actually think about it as uh, running. You also need to take account the directions. Okay, example four. This time we have a lot of information and we are trying to draw the graph. Let's start with our x-intercept and y-intercept. x-intercept is ne at negative four, zero, right there, one, zero, right there, and three, zero, right there. And it says across at zero, five, so this is the y-intercept. Next, minimum and maximum. Minimum is at two, negative three, so two, negative three, that's the point. Maximum is negative two and then seven. Okay, it says positive, so from negative four to one. Negative four, this is the point we have, all the way to one, that's all positive, which means they should be above. I'm just gonna, you know, draw a curve to make this is the maximum, and cross at this y-intercept, and then goes down to our point. That's not quite a smooth curve, I'm gonna redraw it. It's going up, and then all the way to the right, like to that point, okay. And also from three to infinity, this is three, three into infinity is also positive. As for a negative, as for the negative, it's going from negative infinity to four, so that means this portion has to be negative. And between one and three, we also have a local minimum, so that is going to be kind of how the curve looks. But you can have something completely different as long as you have these uh, conditions met. And that is everything for 4.1. Thank you.